So first, loss aversion, the so-called prospect theory by the Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman, who has a book out right now called Thinking Fast and Slow. A prospect theory, what he discovered was that basically the fear of losing something for human beings is twice as powerful as the thrill of gaining something. So if you can imagine all your communications and marketing going through that filter, then you might turn things upside down on occasion. Because what you're really talking to is a, a human who is more afraid of losing something than they are thrilled by winning or gaining something. So that's one simple principle. Here's another one called homophily, which really means birds of a feather flock together. But within a social media construct that we have today, we're getting narrower and narrower and more and more tribal. And so we're like an echo chamber of what we believe. And so being belonging, we know from both uh, behavioral economics and from neuroscience, because when we feel we belong, there is a hormone that fires in the brain called oxytocin. It's called the trust hormone. And that makes us feel warm and fuzzy and good that we feel we belong to that group. And just the opposite, when we're booted from that group, we feel terrible. It's painful. So this leads to a marketer understanding of social proof. Social proof means instead of lecturing somebody they're doing the wrong thing, you show them that the people who you really care about are already doing this thing over here. So why aren't you? Don't get left out. And that, of course, has been part of testimonial campaigns forever. So it's not something new, but it just shows you the power within behavioral economics and neuroscience of using more effective ways. First of all, behavioral economics and neuroscience will never, ever replace the need for creativity. So there are certain things that are just immutable truths, unchanging truths about advertising, PR, and communications, and they may never change. But there are levels of effectiveness now that we can increase through understanding behavioral economics in uh, neuroscience. So if you think of an example, if you look at just behavioral economics, really that is a, a, a whole uh, system of human biases, and it's understanding why we are irrational and how we make decisions based on being irrational. And so what behavioral economics helps us do is reframe messages or retell stories in a different way. But we're not doing it just to do it. We're doing it because originally we were meant to solve a client's problem or to help a client. So whether it's improve sales or improve an image or get through a crisis, those are still the issues that we're grappling with. This gives us a level of science and social science to be more effective rather than just shooting in the dark on that. And they're two very, very different things. Behavioral economics is a set of observed principles of human behavior. That we're irrational in our decision making, but we're irrational in the same way over and over again. So it helps us understand then how do we talk to humans in a way that will actually help them, comfort them into a better decision. Neuroscience is very different. Neuroscience is the study of what activity is going on in the brain as humans do things like shape an opinion or get barraged by messages. Now where I think people go too far is neuromarketing. Neuromarketing risks jumping to conclusions. Because this brain scientist, the neuroscientist, will tell you that so far it is just what they observe. It's correlative, not yet cause and effect. So we have a healthy respect for what we do not know. And so we are big believers in students of neuroscience, huge users of behavioral economics. But neuromarketing may be something that is too easy and jumps to too many conclusions too fast. 